So let's take a quick look at the following example that deals with comparing the conductivities of semiconductors and insulators. So recall that semiconductors are better at conducting electricity than insulators. So to show that this is actually true, we can determine and compare the number of free electrons found in the conduction band of our semiconductor and our insulator. And the one that contains more electrons in the conduction band is a better conductor of electricity. Remember, the conduction band of our solid contains the electrons that are responsible for creating electric current and therefore are responsible for creating conductivity. Now, if we make the assumption that the temperature of both solids, the insulator and the semiconductor is 300 kelvins, and that each one of our solids both contains 2 times 10 to the 22 electrons, in part A, we want to find the number of free electrons in the conduction band if the gap energy between the valence band and our conduction band band is 6 electron volts and B we want to find the number of free electrons in our semiconductor if our gap energy EG is equal to only 1 electron volts. So let's begin with part A and let's begin by painting the picture of what's actually taking place. So inside our insulator solid we have the valence band and the valence band contains our quantum states that are entirely filled with our electrons. Now these electrons in the valence band are not the electrons that can create electric current. But if these electrons from the valence band can actually gain enough energy and transition into the conduction band, then those electrons, known as free electrons, can basically move about creating our electric current. Now to actually transition from the valence band to our conduction band, our electron has to overcome this quantity of energy shown in red. And this is known as the gap energy or the band gap energy energy that is given by 6 electron volts. So this is our gap energy and if we divide the gap energy by 2 that will give us the Fermi energy level. Now we can actually use the gap energy and the Fermi energy level to calculate what the probability is of our electrons occupying our empty quantum states in the conduction band and we can calculate this probability using the Fermi Dirac probability function. So since since the Fermi Dirac probability function tells us the probability of the quantum states with a certain energy being occupied at some temperature within our solid, we can use this to calculate the number of electrons in our conduction band. So the Fermi Dirac probability function looks something like this. So we spoke about this in our lecture on this probability function. So basically, the K is the Boltzmann constant, the T is the temperature in Kelvin, our EF is the Fermi energy, and the E is our actual energy. So basically, to calculate our difference between E minus EF, we simply take our difference, that is, we take this quantity and divide it by 2. So basically, E minus EF, so we take this entire energy energy minus this entire energy and that gives us this difference here. And to calculate this, we simply divide this entire red section, our gap energy, by 2. So this quantity that appears in the exponent of the exponential function is simply 6 electron volts divided by 2 or 3 electron volts. Now when we actually use this energy, we have to use the energy in joules. So we we take this and divide it by 1 1.6 or multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 and that gives us the energy in joules which is equal to 4.8 times 10 to negative 19 joules. 
So 1 divided by e to the power of our energy divided by the, uh, the Boltzmann constant multiplied by our temperature in Kelvins and we take this and add 1 to it and this gives us a value of about 4.436 times 10 to negative 51. So this gives us the probability of our electron actually occupying our conduction band. Now if we take this probability and multiply it by the number of electrons, that will actually give us the number of electrons that occupy our conduction band. And because if we multiply these values out, we get a number less than one, that means no electrons are actually found within our conduction band and the insulator does not actually conduct our electricity at this particular temperature. So, now let's move on to part B. So in part B, we want to repeat this process, except now we're dealing with the semiconductor, which now has our energy gap of not six electron volts, but only one electron volt. So if we find that we do have electrons in the conduction band of the semiconductor, that means our semiconductor is better at conducting electricity. So if we follow the same exact procedure, we first calculate the energy difference. So we simply divide one electron volt by two and that gives us this. We convert into joules, that gives us this. And then we plug that into our Fermi-Dirac probability function. And that gives us about 4.05 times 10 to the negative nine. So this gives us the probability. And if we multiply the probability by the total number of electrons in the solid, that will give us the number of electrons which gain enough energy to overcome this gap energy barrier and transition into the empty unoccupied quantum states of our conduction band. So the conduction band, the valence band, and notice if we multiply these values, we get 8.1 times 10 to the 13 electrons. So this is is the number of electrons that will be found in the conduction band and which and which will lead to an electric current so we conclude that the semiconductor is a much better conductor of electricity than the insulator because it contains many more free electrons in our conduction band than if we compare it to our conduction band of the ins insulator which contains absolutely no electrons